Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Dossier. This is their impression of Libra by Yves Saint Laurent, the Eau de Parfum. And of course, this fragrance is called Floral Lavender. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of Floral Lavender by Dossier, which is their impression of Libra by Yves Saint Laurent Eau de Parfum, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like fragrance reviews here on YouTube, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. And of course, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy this type of content. And so, Dossier is a brand that makes their own impression or clones of more popular designer or niche fragrances. So of course they have their own impression of Versace Dylan Blue, Dior Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, Creed Aventus, Green Irish Tweed, Le Labo uh, Santel 33, Rose 31, and the list goes on and on. I've actually done a few other reviews of Dossier fragrances. I'm gonna leave the most recent one up here aside from this one. And in today's video, I'm gonna be letting you know how close I think this is to the real thing. I'm gonna let you know if I think it's worth the price because this is significantly more inexpensive than the actual thing. And I'm also gonna give you a slight percentage of how close it gets. Of course, this is just a rough estimate. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance. Let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So conveniently, Dossier does include a card on the inside of every single box, and it has all of the notes, the concentration, what it's an impression of. So they do express a large degree of transparency. This is 15% concentration. And of course, with the notes in the top, you have Mandarin, Neroli, and Black Currant. As soon as this fragrance opens up, you are going to get a nice balance of the citrus in there. Neroli has a very specific smell to me, and of course, if you've tried fragrances like Neroli Portofino by Tom Ford or even 4711, you know what Neroli smells like. And I don't get that per se, but I do get this fresh citrusy opening, and I actually did spray this about five or seven minutes ago, and the freshness is actually still there. Now, when it comes to the black currant note, it doesn't smell as fruity as it does musky and a few times I've had the opportunity to smell the raw material and it does come across smelling rather musky and so the effect that it has on fragrances can be a little animalic but also a little sensual and flirtatious as well and I think the latter is what is portrayed here so it has a little bit of that musky vibe combined with the citrus in the opening but I think the floral heart is really what steals the show in this composition so you have jasmine lavender and orange blossom. Now, by reading the label on the bottle, you get the impression that this is going to be a lavender heavy fragrance. And indeed, you do get a nice bit of lavender, but it's a really nice combination of the lavender and the jasmine. Now, when it comes to jasmine, of course, you have the molecule jasminol, which smells very clean, fresh, floral, kind of subtle at times. And then you also have a molecule that is found in natural jasmine. It's called indole. It smells really musky. It can almost have a barnyard vibe. That's not what you're getting here. So it gives off this very clean vibe in the heart and the clean vibe in conjunction with that citrusy overtone really makes this a very likable, very accessible type of a formula. Now, as you give this fragrance a chance to dry down, you are going to get a little bit of that vanilla that's in there. It's very, very mild, so don't expect this at all to go into like gourmand territory or anything like that. But in addition to the vanilla, you also have amber and musk. You're gonna get more musk from this than anything else. And so if I were to prioritize or create a hierarchy of the strongest notes that I personally get from this fragrance, in the opening, I would say some sort of nondescript citrus. Again, it has neroli. I don't get anything that smells explicitly of neroli, but I do get a nondescript sort of citrus accord in the opening. And then I get this lavender 
and jasmine combination where the lavender does not smell like a cleaning product and the jasmine is not indolic and then in the base you have musk and then secondary to that would be the vanilla which is also part of the amber accord so there's a little bit of a redundancy there but i see what they're doing they're essentially copying the um note breakdown from the original so what can i say about this fragrance if i had to sum it up using a few adjectives I would say it's flirty. I would say it's professional, professional, pardon me. I would say it's elegant. I would say it's youthful. And I would also say that it's very posh. And so I, I really do enjoy the vibe of YSL's Libra. And of course, this is the Eau de Parfum. That fragrance is available in a couple different concentrations. So please bear that in mind. Now, with my experience of smelling the original and of course encountering it on a few different occasions how close do i think this comes to the original and i also do have an official sample of ysl's libra a carded sample i would say this comes about 95 percent close to the original now this is concentrated at 15 percent so you can expect this one to give you slightly above average longevity and projection and i think that that's what most people are looking for most people are looking for a fragrance that is budget friendly something that's not going to burn a hole in your pockets but also something that's going to get you through the workday right nobody wants a fragrance that you put it on an hour later it vanishes right you want something that's going to linger with you something that is going to get you noticed even after your lunch break and i think that this fragrance will do that for you but i think a lot of the contributing factors of the uh, noticeability of this fragrance are of course those uh, pervasive base notes like the vanilla the amber the musk so on and so forth and the florals are pretty resolute and long lasting as well so 90 to 95 percent similar to libra by yves saint laurent it really just jogs the same memories at times this can also come across smelling kind of soapy on account of that clean jasmine that's in here I really do like this one and I'm going to try to encourage my wife to wear it a little bit more often. She has her favorite. She oftentimes doesn't want to give them up in place of wearing something else, but I think this is something that she'll love. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, not unique obviously this is a clone but i do think that it smells quite similar to the original the eau de parfum that is and the overall smell is very pleasant very accessible modern but also posh and sophisticated like i said earlier longevity you're going to get about seven to eight hours the projection is great for the first half hour of application and it starts to sit kind of closer to the skin at about that four and a half hour mark but of course if you're working a nine to five if you work eight or seven or eight hours a day it's going to get you through that work day and so no qualms there and in terms of the versatility i think this one can be worn dressed up or dressed down i think this one can be worn in the hotter weather and the colder weather especially if you're wearing it indoors where they have you know central ac and then of course i think anybody of any age can wear this one some might argue that on on account of the floral nuances this is a bit more feminine leaning but of course if you're a confident guy that likes wearing floral perfumes these are just recommendations, wear what you love, wear what makes you happy. And then in terms of the presentation, quite minimalist, but it's one of the factors contributing to them being able to keep the price low. So my final verdict on this fragrance is if you are a fan of YSL's Libre Eau de Parfum, you're looking for something that is relatively inexpensive, something with a money back guarantee. If you get through that sample that they include with the box, if you wear through it, you decide, hey, it doesn't work on your skin, you can always get a refund. And so I really like brands that have policies like that that allow you to commit to purchasing something without feeling like you're at a loss. And so great fragrance. Again, I'm going to try to encourage my wife to wear it, especially now that the school year is starting for both of us. We're both teachers, so I can see her putting a nice dent in this one. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for joining me. That was my fragrance review of, what was the name again? Floral Lavender, right? And so that's another thing that the brand does. They try to highlight what some of the prominent notes are in the fragrances to make it a little bit easier for you to distinguish between uh, the various fragrances. Like I think 
um, Aventus's musky oak moss or something. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. Love you all. If you took something of value from this review, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. And of course, if you can give this video a thumbs up, it would really mean a lot to me as well. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you soon. Bye.